Hey, welcome everybody. Hopefully a fun and short video here at Glow, at Blue Glow Electronics today. I've had people over time ask me how I properly discharge capacitors, specifically those in vacuum tube amplifiers, where not only is there a significant amount of current stored there in, as in energy, but also a lot of high potential voltage. Um, you can get up to 400, 600, even more volts on a uh, power supply of a tube amplifier. And, um, you know, touching that can cause some quite uh, significant pain. My first ever experience, hang on, I still got the device, I'll show you. Yeah, my first ever device, uh, it's nothing more than a long screwdriver, and uh, this was in the late 70s. Had no formal um, education on, uh, on electronics, um, and I was working on a lot of uh, high-powered RF amplifiers. And uh, he would take simply take and uh, short this back part to the chassis and go down and short this on the capacitors. You'd hear a big pow, burn an et etch a mark on the uh, screwdriver, and um, sparks happen. Little did I know at that point in time, you know, this was uh, doing some major damage to the capacitors. Uh, big inrush current there. And, um, you know, I learned a lesson along the way because one time I actually got my finger in between the chassis and this and the end of the capacitor and uh, ran up my arm, popped open my elbow, uh, about a quarter inch uh, hole in the end of my elbow where it continued to bleed and seep for a long time. So um, sometimes lessons come the hard way when you're a young kid. Don't know why my parents probably shouldn't have had let me be working with such devices at an age of like uh, 10 or 11 years old, but... I was doing it. Um, any rate, uh, along the way, you know, I've gotten much more sophisticated, as you can see here. Um, connect a little device uh, to uh, to the chassis, and then I've basically been using the other end here on the other side of a resistor um, to kind of slowly bleed off um, capacitors, and that's what I've been using. But um, about 20 years ago or so, I was um, was at a ham fest, and I saw this little device on the table. And I thought, that's pretty neat, and I uh, asked the guy what it was for, and he was so basically said, hey, I use it to discharge capacitors, and I thought that was cool, but, uh, you know, I thought I could make one of those, why would I buy one, but uh, did I ever make one? No, I've been continuing to use this. And here recently, I was watching a YouTuber, uh, another YouTuber, and he actually made one of these in the middle of his video, um, and I thought, you know what, that's pretty cool, so um, I probably should upgrade my equipment a little bit and uh, get a little more modernized. This is pretty flimsy and uh, prone to damage, not not unlike the old screwdriver was. Um, and please, I'm not condoning the screwdriver method. That was horrible. It's just uh, it's a lesson I learned way way back when I was uh, beginning to even be understand what, uh, what electronics was all about. But the device we're going to make today pretty simple. Um, all I need. So first off, banana clip. And the reason I'm going this route. Um, it, with using a banana plug cable here is because if this thing wears out I can simply replace it. Um, so first and foremost I have grabbed nothing more than just a uh, standard um, silicone um, banana to banana plug um, and got soft, nice soft high voltage uh, wire on it. Uh, I'm going to cut one end off and I'm going to keep the other end here to use with the uh, the banana plug on it. Like I say, the good thing is if the banana plug wears out, I can uh, replace it this end. We'll just end up cutting this end off and we're going to make our little uh, capacitor uh, discharge device out of this. We'll need a resistor, uh, much like I've got going over here. Anything in the 100 ohm range will work just fine. Um, 75 ohm, 100, 120 ohm, something in that range. And I just happen to have a, a nice little 120 ohm I dug through a box here of old uh, 10 watt power resistors and uh, came up with that so we're going to put the 120 ohm resistor on it. I went to Lowe's and I uh, bought this. It's a, uh, if you look at it, it's a 1 8th inch, excuse me, uh, yeah, 1 8th inch, um, 3 foot long uh, copper rod, or brass rod is what I bought. And it was $3.90 so uh, out of this, I'm going to cut it 12 inches long right here. So out of this, you could theoretically make uh, three of these wands. So make one for yourself and two for your buddies. And then the only other thing you need is a bunch of heat shrink to it. And we'll get to that here in a minute as we start making this thing. Uh, let me get this rod cut. I'm, I'm going to do nothing more than use a, uh, a set of uh, um, 
biter pliers that I've got to cut this stuff. It's uh, pretty soft metal. And as you can see, I laid it down with a set of ruler here. Marked it with a magic marker right here at the 12 inch mark. Um, I'm just going to use, like I said, a pair of pliers. And uh, you could use a Dremel, you could use a hacksaw. There's lots of ways to cut this thing. Uh, but I'm going to take the end once I'm done over to the grinding wheel for a minute. So it really doesn't matter to me how I cut it off. And as you can see, it snipped right off. Got a little got a little sharp edge to it there and we'll take that over to the grinding wheel and grind it off a little bit. Alright, as you can see here, I'm just going to use the grinding wheel here. I'm going to grind the end down a little bit. And then the side of the grinding wheel. Get this thing smooth off a little bit. Use the brush a little bit here. And, uh, what I'm trying to do is make a nice little tip here. Not too pointy, not too sharp. I'm just kind of grinding it around a little bit. Use the brush to uh, grind it off a little bit. Yeah. Light the tip on. Okay, we're back on the bench. Trying it again with just the one light set up. I think what I did the last time to confuse my camera was put a, uh, a, uh, a warm light and a, <laughs> a soft light. Um, two sets of them beside each other, so hopefully this will turn out better. But here's the gist of what you're trying to do. You're trying to take this copper rod, and you're basically um, going to... We've got a snip the end off of this. Let me find the ends here. Um, we're basically going to snip one end off like this. And then we've got to strip some of the insulation off of this. Um, about that much right there. And these are just, I like these, they're greenly, uh, nice little wire strippers, you can get them at Lowe's or anywhere. Um, and that's what we're going to be connecting to, nice soft wire, nice good insulation here. These, these things were rated up to a thousand volts when I had bought them, um, so no worries there. But the gist of what we're going to want to do is connect one end of this to this um, resistor here, and we'll do that via solder. And then the other end of the resistor, we're wanting to attach it to this brass rod and solder it. And then you're wanting to do two things. One, you're wanting to insulate this end of the rod almost all the way down here to the tip. So that when you're trying to get this thing inside there to, uh, down inside of a piece of equipment in the chassis, to actually maybe, uh, you know, touch a, I'll give you a great example. Here's the capacitor board. You want to touch the end and discharge the capacitors right here. And you don't want to accidentally touch something else. So you want to you want to kind of uh, shield off the rest of this rod right here. And then likewise on the back side here, um, you certainly want to shield this from this rod itself. And you want to wrap all of this rod up here so that it's not um, exposed. Because otherwise, the path of shortest re res resistance may become you. In other words, if uh, if the voltage and current traveling up this rod um, has a quicker source to ground like through your finger here than through this resistor back down and around to the chassis you become the uh, shortest, path, shortest path to ground. So we're going to insulate this back side as well and we got to somehow secure this down onto this thing. We're going to do all this um, via a multitude of different sized shrink wrap tubing and I've not done one of these yet so it might be a little bit of trial and error we may end up uh, cutting some off and putting it back on but I do know the first step I need to do is go ahead and get this thing here um, kind of mounted down onto this uh, to this rod and I got to, I was playing a little bit around with just the feel that right there feels about right um, with the resistor so you can hold it uh, in your hand um, and we'll end up putting shrink wrap around that but it's about the right distance to touch something with there. And you still got a little bit on the back of your hand here, uh, like a wand. Feels good. So we're going to start about right there. And what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and wrap this wire around this, uh, around the edge of this. Um, just use, the, use that to help Let's turn it so it doesn't hurt me. And uh, I'm going to get that thing soldered on there right there. I'm get my soldering iron turned on. We'll kind of take it from there. To help a little bit with the solder here on this uh, this brass rod, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, this flux. It's called liquid solder flux. Um, you can pick this up at a lot of different places. Um, 
but it'll help a lot with uh, just soldering this thing down on here. I also want to raise this up a little bit off my Teflon pad here because if I don't, I'll end up uh, trying to I'll end up burning into my into my solder mat here a little bit. So as you can see, I just put a short little piece of thin wood under there using just some. Uh, this is um, 16 gauge uh, solder. It's 63 percent. Um, 10, 37% lead, but should be able to get this thing good and hot here. It'll take a minute, um, indeed, because that brass rod's pretty decent in size. But once we kind of get it going, get a little solder flowing, the solder itself will help flow down around, and the flowing of the solder will help spread the heat onto the rod fairly well. trying to smooth this solder out on this rod really good so that it's not all bunched up in, in a little place here. And I think it's working out fairly well here. Alright, it's really well soldered on there now as you can kind of see here. Um, not going anywhere. Wrapped around, got about solder spread out about that much on this thing so uh, should be good and connected at this point we just got to insulate this thing really well all right I went through I kind of like the yellow down here on the end um, there's no you know, doesn't matter what color you use for what but I, I kind of like the yellow because you can see it pretty well and uh, as you can see here on the tip I left just about um, a little less than a quarter inch sticking out here on the tip and it'll be just a minute um, let me dig it out here. Keep it mounted underneath the bench. But um, it's just a matter then of uh, using your heat shrink gun and this thing. And uh, lo and behold, you got your first first piece of heat shrink on there. So that'll help, that'll help uh, kind of keep you from touching anything else inside the circuit here when you're trying to just get that tip down in there. And let's uh, let's look at what we're going to use next. I got to keep that thing up here. Oh, I need to heat it a little bit more. You gotta be careful too with heat shrink laying on your bench <laughs> when you're doing this. You can easily uh, easily heat up stuff you didn't mean to heat up. As you can see here, I accidentally got a little close to the end of that one and started uh, closing it up just a hair. Um, just to, to... Yeah, um, that's on there good and snug now. And uh, let's take a look at, figure out what we're going to do here. Next, I wanted to get is this whole back side. So I think what I'm going to do is use that same yellow, and come all the way underneath the other side here on the back, and look at that, it goes over the end. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it, you can see I'm pinching it. It goes past the end just about a uh, quarter of an inch, but that that seals up the entire backside there. And I'm going to get this stuff out of the way this time as I'm doing this. Um, let me go ahead and heat this one up. And you see that end closing up really well down there? If you notice this stuff's rated at 600 volts, you can read right here, 125 degrees Celsius on it. So uh, look at that, the end back here, nice and neat, uh, kind of folded over a little bit. So getting this thing uh, insulated up. One of the things I'm going to want is once I get this soldered on here, is I'm going to want some way to hold this down really good to this uh, right here. So I'm going to want to get this on there. But I'm going to need to do that um, before I need to slide this down on this uh, thing. Otherwise, once I get this on there, I'll have no way to come over this other end with this heat shrink tubing and kind of mount it down on there. So I'm going to go ahead and basically put this on top of this and slide it way down and out of the way. And I can come back in a few minutes after I solder this then and use that to hold that back end down. Okay. So I'm going to slid another piece down that shaft as well so that I have more than one. And what I'm wanting to do now is uh, get this thing all soldered up here. 
really well onto this resistor lead. Nice and soldered. Let it cool down a minute and then we can start sliding our heat shrink tubing up. But you definitely want to let this uh, cool down really, really well before you start sliding the heat shrink tubing up. Um, but hopefully you can see here what I'm trying to achieve now is putting this and this into the same tubing. And these things are tight. Um, so if I can get that all the way up on there. It may take a few minutes of fun dangling here, but the goal is to get this up on here. And I'm going to let that cool down before I push it any further. And uh, that will help seal that down. Alright, it's a good thing I also slid this yellow one back here because the red one turned out to be too small. That's the beauty of having a bunch of different um, size heat shrink tubing to play around with. I've just picked this up at various ham fest over the years, different sizes, different shapes, etc. But, um, yeah. As we start to heat this up, as you can see, it shrinks down here on the back end. Look at that. Beautiful. Starting to look good. Now I just got to get something to cover this whole resistor up through here and make sure I'm covering these leads because that right there would bite you. Uh, so would that right there. Okay, I have this big black stuff here. That uh, pretty heavy duty. Uh, looks to be about a half and ooh, it's almost three quarters of an inch in width there. But um, let's see what happens when we when we heat it up well. And hopefully it'll shrink down fairly well on either end. Yeah, it's doing. Look at that. And this end's not going to go quite as small as the, uh, the cable and whatnot, but that's okay. Look at that. Looking pretty nice there, isn't it? Coming off the green, nice and... Uh, almost like a uh, flex uh, connector there coming down continuing going down all right the only thing we got now is this little bit of opening right here and um, what I'm gonna do is just kind of step it down piece by piece so uh, we'll put this over it shrink it and then I'll step it down one or two more times and we'll have this thing uh, kind of figured out here I do believe um, and it'll be just more insulation to each end as we do this Good right I think one more piece and we'll have it we'll have it completely stepped down here. I kind of like this this blue right here too. Um, or I kind of like this this green right here would be cool on it. At this point it's kind of a cosmetic aesthetic. <laughs> but uh, yeah we're just stepping it down here so that it uh, at the end it ends up um, without an opening on it. Look at that. And we're stepping it all the way down now. Alright. Check it out. So, now all you do, find your chassis, wherever. Here's a great example. Um, it's still working on these things, but you would actually clip this to the chassis here on the side. You would then come down inside here and hit the filter capacitors and um, and you've got all this very well insulated at this point and what it would do is it would feed up through this it would go through the 100 ohm or uh, in this case 120 ohm resistor back around this cable to ground and it would slowly bleed it off um, you'd have to hold it on each one three or four seconds brass rods nice and sturdy here as you can see um, I don't know what to call this other than a uh, uh, high voltage vacuum tube um, electrolytic capacitor discharge device of many colors is what I'm going to call this. But uh, hey, it was fun making it. Uh, be keep neat to keep here around here on the bench. Like I said, uh, I might have a whole five or six bucks in making this thing at this point in time. Uh, you just got the little bit of brass tip sticking out here that you'd use to touch down in there. 
all this is extremely well insulated. You know, if I wanted to throw another piece on there, I could feed it up around. But uh, I think this thing is uh, in really good shape at this point in time. I'm I'm really happy with how this thing has turned out. I just used an old uh, lead resistor, brass rod, and uh, heat shrink tubing, and uh, this thing has found a new place on my bench. I will guarantee you a neat little device to have to discharge uh, electrolytics of any type, but especially those in uh, high-powered, uh, high-voltage vacuum tube amplifiers. Thanks for watching, everybody. I do want to give credit to the guy I watched do this. I think it goes by X-Ray Tony. He made one in one of his videos, and it reminded me of what I had seen years ago. And uh, I got to thinking, why didn't I ever make one of those? And I thought, well, I'll make one, and uh, and we'll throw this thing up on uh, on YouTube. Thanks, everybody. I uh, hope you make one. Hope it works for you, and I uh, hope you enjoy it.